to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible, justice for all. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, we're continuing on with our emergency declarations. And so we have limited person-to-person -person contact here, and it will be recorded. Um, our meeting will be recorded, and if access to the recording will be made, made available on the school's district website as soon as reasonably provided, as soon as reasonably possible. So we'll start with approval of the agenda as presented. So move. I'll second it. First from Director Paglin, a second from Director Boyles. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, we'll have a roll call vote. Kevin Boyles? Yes. Tom Haglin? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Jenna Shogren? Yes. Charles Blacklance? Yes. Unanimously carried. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll pre proceed on with district rec recognitions, and I'll turn it over right. to Lane Larson. Thank you. Um, I want to start tonight by congratulating the Brainerd Warrior Dance Team, who finished seventh place in jazz and third place in high kick at the Minnesota State High School League meet on March 12th and 13th of 2021. And Jana, I'm sure that was a very exciting time. A very exciting day. Very cool. I've been we, meddling since 2013, so we had some happy girls awesome. wow. and coaches. Yeah, I knew we were really close to third many years in a row, and yeah. so fun to get the medal. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations to Jessica Lofran Lufrano Larson, who is named Section 8AA Assistant Coach of the Year for Gymnastics. Congratulations also to the following members of the boys swim team who have qualified for the state meet on Friday, March 19th, 2021 in the following events. And honestly, I haven't heard how they did, but these are the qualifications for state. The 200 medley relay with Tristan Dawson, Parker Taji, Cade Rosenwall, and Thomas Rule. They had set a school record to go to state. The 200 free relay, Thomas Rule, Kate Rosenwald, Mason Keepers, and Parker Taji, who, Taji, who were section champions, and they also set a school record. Congratulations to the 400 free relay, Thomas Rule, Kate Rosenwald, Mason Keepers, and Tristan Dawson. And to the 100 free, Nate Mason Keepers. The 50 free, Thomas Rule. The 100 butterfly, Kate Rosenwald. And the 100 backstroke, Tristan Dawson. Congratulations to have so many uh, kids and so many events go to the state tournament. And at the next meeting, we'll find out. Our athletic director was gone today, so we didn't find out uh, how the state tournament went. Congratulations also to Brandon Niefert, the Alpine skiing, for earning all state honors with his 11th place finish at the state tournament, which was held on March 10th. Congratulations to Lauren Kellenberg, Alpine skiing, for earning all state honors with her 16th place finish at the state tournament held on March 10th. Congratulations to the Brainerd High School Knowledge Bowl team who recently participated in the Region 5 qualifying tournament and placed in both first and second place. The first place team consisted of Jackson Callion, Carlton Anderson, Reed Bokerman, Colton Doles, and Noah jo Joke. The second place team consists of Gabe Maurer, Charles Johnson, Meryl Tiganoa, Tiganoa, Jackson Dwyer, and Jonathan Larson. These teams will participate in the state tournament in a virtual format on April 9th, 2021. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. And there's one additional recognition we would like to do tonight, and that is for you, Superintendent Lane thank Larson. You. So we are very pleased as a board to congratulate you on receiving the K.E. Jacobs Memorial Award given by the Minnesota Association of School Administrators. Thank you. You're welcome. And you are not anywhere near done yet. So <laughs> <laughs> We could be. And we could just say thank you. So um, this prestigious award recognizes excellent leadership and involvement in MASA and other educational organizations. You are honored for your leadership, your concern for students, and active involvement in professional community affairs. I'm going to take this off while I read this, if you guys are okay with that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of warm. From the press release issued by MASA 
Um, it said, during her 38-year career in public education, Larson has focused her leadership effort toward enhancing, promoting, and providing <laughs> equitable teaching and learning opportunities for all students in her districts. Larson has served as the superintendent of Brainerd Public Schools since 2016. She was previously the superintendent of Bagley Public Schools and Thief River Falls Public Schools. Prior to the superintendency, she served as a teacher, assistant principal, principal, and assistant superintendent. Heidi Hahn from our school district said, Lane not only dedicates herself to the big needs and issues, she dedicates herself to the little things that make a huge difference in the lives of her students and staff. She is an experienced, ethical, driven, and compassionate leader that demonstrates and possesses more grit than any other leader I have had the privilege of working alongside. I am humbled and honored that I get a front row seat to learn from her and be mentored by her. So this line is just, Lane, this is such a well-deserved award. And so it's been great working with you, and we just really want to appreciate you tonight. You take care of your students and you take care of our district and our community. You're one of the most hardworking persons I have known. You really are. And these past years, you know, they've been a little tough, but you've just gone through them with poise. Thank you. Um, so from the entire board, we would like to thank you for your innovative service to our district and for making our work not only easier, but more fun. So we're gonna share a few comments from some staff here. We're not done yet still. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily we have a short agenda tonight so we can spend this time recognizing you. you. Um, and I'm gonna pass it along so I don't have to do all the talking. So Tom's gonna to read a few of them. So this is where we do the roasting, is that correct? Yes. Lighten <laughs> <laughs> it up a little. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. So Nutrition Services would like to congratulate Superintendent Lane Larson on her K.E. Jacobs Award. Her leadership and dedication to students and staff has helped our programs to flourish. Next Without yet. doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Under her leadership and support, Nutrition Services has expanded our community outreach through healthy snack, summer, and after school meals. We'd like to thank her for her guidance, support, and leadership and congratulate her on a much deserved award. Since becoming superintendent in 2016, Lane has worked tirelessly to improve our district. Her energy and passion for the students and staff in our district is unmatched. Charlie Campbell, Activities Director. When I first met Lane, I immediately loved her infectious smile and energy. She really lights up a room. Lane has the ability to make each sport and coach feel like we are special to her. She is a decision maker and deals with situations head on. She is also compassionate and caring. She followed up on an issue that arose with our team which validated me as a coach, letting me know my feelings mattered. I know I am one of many coaches, so the fact that she takes time for us shows she really cares. And this is from Cindy Cloud. And I'm gonna pass this on, but before, I, I just too would like to congratulate you, Lane. Um, I, I, I couldn't think of a, a better leader and superintendent for our district, in particular, these last couple of years and this last year with, with all the changes. You've just been uh, instrumental in, and your, and your leadership is flawless, and I really appreciate uh, working with you. Thank you. So great job. Thank you, Director Hagman. So the first comment I get to read is from John Zemke. I would like to thank Lane for her commitment to the Brainerd Swimming and Diving Programs, and especially her support of our beautiful new aquatic facility that is currently under construction. With the new facility, Brainerd will have one of the finest venues for swimming and diving meets, swimming lessons, and physical education classes and this will truly be a community gem. Thank you, Lane, and congratulations on a truly well-deserved award. Next up, from the uh, currently on hiatus, Janet Horn. <laughs> really? I have the privilege, I've had the privilege to work with five superintendents during my tenure with the Brainerd School District, and Lane is one of the most actively involved, ethical, and compassionate leaders that I've had the privilege to work with. She daily displays concern for staff, students, community with her uh, decision making. I've learned from her knowledge and wisdom and it is my honor to have the opportunity to work with her on a daily basis. And um, in taking a page from both of their books, I'll add my own uh, as I'm obviously new to the board and just getting to know you, Superintendent Larson, what I would say is this. 
uh, it would be hard to um, trace steps and go back through all these same comments, but they reflect what I've learned about you. And what I would say is that as the CEO of this district, your, your heart is in what you do. I've seen that. Your passion is in what you do, and I've seen that. Um, and in corporate America, I've spent 30 years there. Uh, you would have made a heck of a lot more money as a CEO of a different corporation <laughs> than, than you probably did here. But uh, hopefully in the next few years as you head towards retirement, you can look back on everything you did and realize all the lives you've touched in the districts that you've been in. And I can see that as plain as day, just even being as new as I am to the, uh, to the board family here. So thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. All right, hand this over to Jenna. We have a song. Are you singing? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lane, I get to uh, read you a comment from Education Minnesota. Education Minnesota Brainerd extends warm congratulations to Lane Larson on being honored by the Minnesota Association of School Administrators with the K.E. Jacobs Memorial Award. Our district has demonstrated a forward-thinking approach to leadership, <clears throat> hiring practices, and Lane exemplifies the benefits of a leadership team that resembles and reflects our certified staff. We look forward to a continued positive partnership as we move toward strengthening our schools and community. Uh, the next one is from Tammy Stelmach, principal at Baxter Elementary School. Lane is known for her huge smile and warm heart. I think you've heard that more than once. She strives to capture the input of the community and works to ensure that all voices are heard. And next I get to give you a message from Amy Jordan, principal at LEC. Amy says, Superintendent Larson is one of the most genuine individuals I have met. She truly cares about the students and the staff in the Brainerd Public Schools District. She consistently works hard to do the right thing, to lead with kindness, and to make a difference in our community. I am honored to work with her. Congratulations, Lane. And I'll take my turn at thanking as well from working with you in many capacities, whether it was as a community member, and I'm fortunate to have two kids in the district that you lead, and as a parent, I can tell you it's very apparent how much you care about everyone from those of us who sit around this table to community members, to up and coming students and parents. And, and I've seen you sitting in the bleachers at a lot of events and going to a lot of activities and just know that that's noticed and you're a very busy person and the fact that you give all that extra time to come and support our kids is noticed and appreciated. So thank you. Not enough this year though. Well, yeah, we're all lucky to just be playing this year. Isn't so that's that true, okay. yeah. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Lane, I'm honored to be able to work with Superintendent Lane Larson and overjoyed that she was honored with the E with the KE Jacobs Memorial Award. Superintendent, Lar Superintendent Larson has led us through several unprecedented situations and throughout all of them, I was able to witness her dedication to our staff, students and community. She is always well researched, weighs all the options and is compassionate and fearless on, on our behalf. Congratulations, Superintendent Larson. You make us all proud every day. Thank you, Molly Rasky, Principal Niswa. I'd like to just share something quickly with you, Lane, that as, as a parent in the school district, uh, also a person like Jana, that even before my, my seat on the board here, having the opportunity to work with you, I believe that I can, I can speak for those future generations of parents and those parents that are living in and breathing it right now through through the, the pandemic, through the construction, that uh, years from now, you've set the new standard that people will refer to your leadership as the good old days. And I believe that we're living through that right now. So I appreciate your leadership. Well, I wasn't expecting this. Well, so. we're not quite done yet. Yeah. We're not quite done yet. <laughs> <laughs> May I say something? Okay, wait, wait, no, we're not quite ready for you yet, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Charles, I think you uh, missed the Jim Conrad one, so I'll read that one quick. In okay, the short okay. time that I have known Superintendent Larson, her leadership through these difficult times has been superb. She navigates muddy waters with a positive attitude and a clear and direct plan. Superintendent Larson accomplishes this by understanding and addressing not only the big issues, but also the little ones. 
Her approach and interactions are both kind and compassionate. She works hard to get to know all individuals she comes into contact with. And that was from Jim Conrad, our principal at Harrison. And then there was one other one that I had to handwrite that came in, and that's from the Paraprofessional Governing Board. Congratulations to Lane on her outstanding achievements during her 38-year career in public education. We are privileged to have her here at ISD 181. So, and I know that guy, oh, he was on the sunglasses, so I didn't really recognize him, but that guy that's somewhere oh. warm wants to say something too. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, hello everyone. I just wanted to personally congratulate Lane on this very prestigious honor. Um, many people in the community don't realize how how, what an honorable um, award this really is. Um, it's really, you know, uh, so well deserved and it's the apex of an outstanding 38 year career. And my great fear is now Lane's husband, Warren, will want her to retire because this is, you know, like the achievement at an end of career, but I'm hoping that, that your career will last 41, 42 years, Lane. Um, I also want to say this, I've known every um, superintendent for Brainerd Schools since Elliot Woolery, personally. And I consider Lane Larson to be one of the top superintendents in Brainerd Public Schools history, if not the best. She is well respected by her peers because she combines so many great character strengths. She's hardworking, smart, compassionate, empathetic, and focused on what to do right for the children. And you have a rare quality, Lane, in that you Always work hard, no matter what the challenge is, you face it and, and you don't give it off to anyone. You, you uh, work on it until it's done. And so, Lane, I just want to say it's an honor to serve with you in ISD 181 and to call you my friend. you like us to go on for a little longer? <laughs> no, on an added note, it's always good to talk to you when I'm having a bad day. Um, you and I have talked about this before, but I, but I think I'm having a bad day. I just call Lane and hear what's going on in the district, and then I feel like I don't have it so bad. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And I think, I think we have cupcakes afterwards, so, oh, oh, so stay for neat. cupcakes, everyone. You just got real. <laughs> you did it um, I just have one thing that I would like to add, and that is, um, First of all, I'm, I'm extremely humbled and really appreciative. I didn't expect this. Um, I thought that there might be a little statement here. And so I uh, wasn't prepared for all the kindness that I heard. And I, I certainly um, am touched. And, and I thank you all for that. Um, in my speech, and I know, Martha, you get, or, or Ruth, you get to hear it. Um, I, I talked a lot about the fact that um, Back when I was in the eighth grade, I was at basketball camp and a, a basketball uh, speaker said, what you have is your gift from God and what you make of it is your gift back to God, meaning that whatever skills you've been given, you have a responsibility to make this world a better place. And I, I talked in my speech about the fact that, and, and I share this with teams a lot, that if we ever think we're gonna do something significant alone, it's not gonna happen. You need the right team at the right time. And this award is certainly not about me. It's about that I have been blessed with, and I have been richly blessed, with the right people at the right time, starting with my mom and dad and my husband and my kids who have always been in my, in my court. Like I said, I've drugged my husband all around this state, you know, and he just, he's, he's just been a rock star. And Every district that I've been in, there have been people that I've learned great lessons from and in Bagley, in my start, in Thief, and now here. And I have to tell you that you are, this is absolutely the most wonderful place. People that, all, that sincerely care. From the Board of Education, you are such a hardworking team, and it's a privilege to work with you. To our entire administrative team, and I look out here, and I look behind me, and Sarah, and Angie, and Heidi, and Sue back here and all the people that I get that I'm blessed to work with every day. Um, you move, you melt my heart because you work so hard. And this award is on behalf of you. To our administrative team, our teachers, our food service, our bus drivers, you know, it takes everybody. It takes that entire group of people to make great things happen and you can't do it alone. And so, like I said, I, I accept the award on all the people that have been blessed who have, have helped this to be just an incredible career. 
So on your behalf, I, I accepted this award and I'm really honored. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we'll go on to the rest of the meeting now. Um, up next, we have public input. If there's a member of the public that would like to address the board, now is the time to come forward. Do we? Okay. And all and the I don't people know if on the screen, too. I didn't talk about them, but all the people on the oh, screen. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. Great team. That is a great team. There's no one out there and no messages via email? Not for her. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we'll go on to approval of the minutes from the March 8th board meeting. I'll move to approve as accept or presented. I'll second. Okay, we have a first from Janice Shogren and a second from Director Black Lance. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Tom Hagelin? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Bob Nystrom? Is a thumbs up? Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Jana Shogren? Yes. Charles Blacklands? Yes. Kevin Boyles? Yes. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Minutes are approved. And next up, we have our consent calendar and, and additional bills for payment. We have a motion. I'll move to accept, or to accept the consent calendar, approve the consent calendar and presentation of additional bills as presented. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. First from Director Boyle, a second from Director Black. Lines. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Jana Shogren? Yes. Charles Blacklands? Yes. Kevin Boyles? Yes. Tom Hagelin? Yes. Carried unanimously. So those are approved. We'll go on to presentations. And first up is our collaborative workers update. Becky Statham and Gerwin Pine Payne. And I'm the rep board representative on the collaborative team. And so just these guys do some really important work for our, for our district and for other districts too. So welcome. Thank you. We sit down while we do this? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I haven't uh, presented to the board before, so I'm not sure if I have a protocol I'm supposed to follow, but um, my name is Becky Statham, and I am the coordinator of the collaborative service team. And we also have one of our collaborative workers. Hi, Cherwin Payne. I work at Harrison Elementary. Um, let's see. I'm not seeing what I need to here. I'll let you do it. Sorry. It's okay. Let's go like this. And do you mind just presenting? Very bad. And then you can just go down. Is that all right? Well, we want to. It's not going to go up. Well, because we have it on Google Meets too, so the people out on the online can see it too. Okay. So that's why it's small we, like that. Are they seeing the presentation view or all of it? They are seeing the the um, the slideshow itself. Okay. That's all we see down here. Mm -hmm. But okay. that's what they see is uh, okay. what's up on the screen. All right. <laughs> you can only go so far. With this okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, we're we're presenting to you today. It didn't shift though up there. I'm sorry. We're presenting to you today about the Collaborative Service Team, and we are an entity of the Family Services Collaborative. And the Family Services Collaborative is a collaborative of one of 90 collaboratives throughout the state of Minnesota. Um, and the Family Services Collaborative operates on three priorities. Go back to that one, please. Um, and, and we want to promote mental health and well-being of children, youth, and young adults. Um, we want to support healthy growth and emotional development of ch children, youth, and young adults. 
And we wanna strengthen resilience and protective factors of families, schools, and communities. And the Family Services Collaborative in Crow Wing County was started in 1996. The Collaborative Service Team has been surveying schools in Crow Wing County since 1999. Um, we have workers in Brainerd School District at Harrison, at Lowell, Nisswa, um, Forest View, Garfield, and Baxter Elementary. Um, and we have also a worker and a half who serve at our early childhood centers. Um, what we do is try to make sure that families and children have equitable access to resources. Um, what they need in order to meet their needs, what they need in order to be at school, be present. Um, and that looks different depending on what school you work at. And it, what, it, cause it really depends on what the school needs as well. Um, so this next slide is, is just an infograph of some of the things that the collaborative service team has done in, this is from last year, 1990, 2019 to 2020. So when we think about what we do in the schools to make sure that they're having, students are having equitable access, it's sometimes going to get kids who miss the bus or working with um, a foster family whose a student has just come into their home and we wanna make sure the student stays at the school that they're at and it takes a little bit to get transportation going. And so we will make that bridge for the family and for that student because we wanna make sure that that student doesn't um, have more, <laughs> we wanna make sure that the students have the support that they need. Um, it's, it's a tr there's lots of different things that go on in students' lives and we wanna make sure that they're able to be able to be there and focus on school when they're at school. Um, when we talk about that stability piece, um, th we support the family as well as the students. Um, so sometimes our work with that includes meeting, meeting with parents and trying to work with them to meet their basic needs. So when you think about what the kinds of things you do, Jerowyn. Um, and it could be a variety of things. I, I feel like really, you know, helping students be their best, most successful at school. And so a lot of times for me that can be, you know, do they have socks? Do they have the winter gear that they need? I make sure that kids know like, if you're missing anything today, there's somebody here to help you and you can let your teachers know or let the other staff in the classroom know and we will help make sure you have those things. So whether that's the physical things, of course, everybody's making sure that the kids are eating breakfast and you know, getting what they need to get their day started. But we wanna make sure that they know that there's somebody there who's able to help you with any of those extra things that you know, they ran out the door and they didn't have time to grab or they're worried about or you know, it's really easy to forget especially if you're going between households that your snow pants were at one house or it got left at daycare and didn't end up here. And then they're sad because they have to stay on the tar and don't have snow pants. So I mean, it mm -hmm. makes it really easy to say, we got a ton of extra stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like just helping that kid have their best day that day. So I feel like, you know, it isn't, we definitely do a lot of things to support kids, but sometimes it's the really simple stuff that just so that that kid has a good day that day. Um, so, so what we do this last year is still the same things that we've always done. It's just has looked very different. So in this past year, we've, we've done more with bringing distance learning kits out to the families, um, checking in with families on why maybe they're not able to get online. Um, we've delivered hotspots. We've worked with Sarah and the tech crew to make sure that kids are able to access with Chromebooks. We've done that, we've done deliveries of those as well, but we're also checking in with the families and seeing what else is going on. Um, maybe they're having problems with the utilities and we make a referral to other community resources on, on uh, LSS or Bridges of Hope or other people who can help with um, supporting the family. Um, it, it's looked a little different. Um, we've, we've, met with kids outside during the summer to do just some extra skill building activities. Um, 
it's we work one on one with kids, but we also work in groups with kids to give them that extra boost that they might need um, to make it through the day. Or we work with kids in a small group who are going through, maybe their families are going through a divorce um, to give them some extra supports and extra tools that they can use. Um, I sat in on groups this last week, which was so much fun um, at one of our elementary schools. And she was working on something called zones of regulation. And it's a, a, a way of teaching kids and giving kids skill to know where they are so that they're able to self-regulate in, in a way that works. Um, identifying if you're in a green and ready to be here and learn. And I have to say, I'm probably at a yellow, which is why I'm talking so fast, because I'm a little nervous and excited. But we help kids understand that about themselves as well. And how can you and what do you do to get yourself back to that green zone and get ready to be learning? So a lot of what we've done is learn how to do some of that virtually in this last year as well. Yeah. The teachers are, are doing lessons with kids for a lot of those things. And like when I have groups with kids, it gives us an opportunity to kind of test that stuff out in a smaller setting. Because definitely staff's putting in a lot of work helping kids learn all these lessons and understand those things. Um, I think about getting to spend time with kids and play games with them. And in that, you know, really a smaller situation where we have a lot of fun, but you know, you play a game and not everybody gets to win the game every time and that can be a little bit hard to deal with. So, you know, we kind of practice those feelings and, and getting through that and knowing that it was still really fun to play that game. And it wasn't that great that your friend got to win, you know, but getting to do that, practice that a few more extra times, you know, can be really good for kids that struggle a little bit with those emotions, those big feelings. So some of the kids that we work with is a little more intense. Um, we, we work, we operate with some of our funding is from the alternative delivery of specialized instructional services. And those are funds that we get from the Minnesota Department of Education. And we have, um, the next slide is just some information about some of those students that we work with for more intentional and intensive services. Um, in Brainerd, we had 197 students that were served through those more intensive services. And if you'd looked at the slide before, we had 595 referrals to the collaborative team um, it last year. So of that, 197 were served through more of a weekly connect with the student in those small groups to do some of those skill building activities. And this just shows some of the outcomes. Um, of those students. We, we, we look at how are they doing? Are they getting to school more often? Are they having a reduction in office referrals? We, we use a measurement to see how their social emotional learning is going. Um, how are they doing within those um, behavioral realms? Sometimes it's on um, whatever the goal is that's, that's set up between the teacher and the collaborative worker and, and the school's um, resource teams. Um, to, to make sure that kids are getting those supports and finding out how are they doing. Um, we look at significant behavioral improvement. Um, we also look at those um, indirect benefits of, of working on, on that social emotional piece on academics. So we have outcome in here in math and reading as well. Um, because if you're able to regulate and, and, and connect, we connect with those kids, they're able to maybe, the hope is and the goal is that they will be more connected in the classroom to their teacher and to what's going on in their learning. So um, is, okay, it's the bottom labels, is it significant, some, <laughs> same, is that kind of? So it's a significant improvement, some improvement. The, the behaviors more or less stayed the same. They didn't have a huge difference. Some decline and then a significant decline. Okay, thank you. And at the very end, it, there's an unable to obtain growth scores because we had such a, a tricky year with, with getting all that information at the end of the year last year. And that's the first time we've ever had to use that. That's impressive. I, you know, it, it makes a big difference if, if 
if you are feeling supported and you have that connection with someone who's kind of on your side or in your, in your corner, um, you're able to maybe make it through or make it, make good choices or, or um, just be able to tune in to what's going on. And supporting, I feel like, you know, staff with that too, that kids sometimes just need a break from the room. And the, the staff are amazing and they love those children up every day. But sometimes a kiddo just needs a break from the room and sometimes the classroom, you know, like that's a great way for them to have a place where they're again, there's another adult here who really cares about you and really wants what's best for you. And you can talk about whatever you need to talk about and we can, you know, help, hopefully help them with some of the skills that they need to help get through the rest of their day. So I feel like that's, you know, a big part of our, our place in the school is to be there for the kids and to be there for the staff too, as an option for them to, to kind of lean on when that's what that kiddo needs. Um, we also go into the home and again, <clears throat> we provide services this is a picture of, of one of our other workers and a student that she was working with. Um, I love the parent's quote. It, it's, it brought them hope. And, and our goal is to provide hope for kids, provide hope for families, um, to give them that connection. Um, as Gerilyn said, we work on some of those other things that are going on with making sure that Sometimes we, we have an access to a fund and, and sometimes it's making sure that they have gas money or transportation or, or whatever's getting in the way of them being safe as well. We've bought front doors before. So we work with the, the whole family and not just the student if we can. Um, our workers do home visits, they, they connect in. And the goal too is if the family feels that same support we're trying to give their kids, they're able to be in the moment with their kids and not worrying about what else is going on in their life. Um, do you have anything you wanna add about that? As a piece of that, working with the families and connecting them with resources in town. So our community has a lot of resources there. And especially this year, more than any, we've had families who have needed them who maybe didn't need them before, um, or families who were savvy to the resources, but that's another part of you know making sure that the family is aware or helping them know which are the programs out there that are available if they need help outside with other things, whether that's you know some financial connections or you know food resources or whatever that might be, but we kind of try to stay um, on the cusp of what's happening in the community so that we can share that with our families if they need it. Sometimes that comes directly from families. The staff knows to recommend like, let's check with the collaborative worker. Maybe they have options for you. Um, or sometimes through the students, you know, looking for things or they let us know what's going on, but making sure that, you know, the families know that like, we're here for you, all of you. And if there's something that you need, there's a way that we can help you. We will definitely look if we don't know the answer to that. You know, and, and the great part about having the whole team if I don't always know the answer, somebody else on the team might know the answer. So it's a great resource to have all of us to be able to troubleshoot. All of us are diff better at different things. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a quick email and all of a sudden there's five different answers and you know we're able to kind of really collaborate that way. And I think that works really great. Do you have any questions for us? How was it when coming back to school for the students? Did you have a lot more needs? when they were from distance coming back in or? You know, I, well, sorry, I felt like it was just like, they were just right back in. Okay. It felt like we just, we just dove right in. Okay. Everybody was so glad to be back. They were glad to see each other, the teachers. We were also glad to see the students. So it, it was almost like it didn't happen, but it sure did. But it definitely <laughs> felt like, you know, they, we were just, we were all in from the start. It, I mean, it, so I feel like it felt really great to have the kids coming back into the building. Mm -hmm. Definitely some change with, getting back into that routine and kids who had, you know, I also got used to wearing comfortable clothes all the time. It was a bit to like, you know, get back into that, those routines. But um, I feel like it was, it's been really great to have them back. I think, I think everyone would agree. <laughs> some, some schools have found a, a, like it's a second honeymoon. Um, you, you have a restart to the school. It's almost like you're starting again with, re, reminding expectations and you have that honeymoon period. And, and I think 
uh, from my perspective of checking in with uh, the other workers, they're getting into the real meat of, of what's going on right now. They're, they're, they're happy to be back. The kids are ready to learn, but they're also, there are some um, behaviors and, and some other mental health services that we make uh, connections to for supports for students because we do, we do skill building activities, but we don't do therapy. And so we make referrals on. Um, I know that they're finding that Northern Pines is, is needing, is their kids are needing more supports. Um, and I would agree that, um, you know, it's, it's up to all of us to make those connections with kids and support their, their mental health. A couple quick questions, if you don't mind. Um, one, you might have covered this and I missed it. On the graph on page four, what time period are we talking about here? This one? Yeah. Oh, yep. That was last year, so 2019 that, to 2020. So school year 2019. Yep. If you had to hazard a guess of what that's going to look like the next time we see one, what do you think it's going to look like? Uh, well, I, I don't have any hazard of a guess for academics. So maybe a better question would be how did this compare to prior years, especially as we move to the right over here? Like, is that kind of typical what we're seeing? Or do you feel like maybe the early, um, because we're getting into obviously last school year when COVID was part of the picture. Sure. We had, we had probably more kids with behavioral um, issues that were down at the other end last year, just because, um, because of everything that was so challenging sure. for kids. I guess that's what I was really looking for. Was... I, I, I haven't gotten a pulse on where we're at at this point yet. Um, it's hard to know. To be fair, there's, there's, kids can be doing really well through a certain point of time and, and something happens and they stumble. And so we want to make sure that we keep them supported so that that stumble doesn't go very far. But it's hard to, you know, they might have done all the way really well up till the end of the school year and something happens. Or maybe they stumbled in December and then it gets better. And I'm probably not answering your question the way you want it, but um, it's, it's a, the information is, is points in time. And so um, I'm, I'm hoping that the kids will be supported enough that they will be doing, making those gains. Not everybody's going to make gains, um, but we want to make sure as many kids as possible have that opportunity. Okay, thank you. That was a good answer. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you have another one? <clears throat> no, actually that answered both of them. Okay. Any others? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, you guys. Thank so you so much. Awesome much. work. Thank you. We are so lucky to have you guys. You are so important in our schools. So thank you. We appreciate it. Well, you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up we have uh, information on the transportation request for proposal. Looks like it's going to be Marcy Lord and Nor Norby. Yep. Welcome. Good evening. Hi. Hello. So we're gonna be real quick compared to that presentation. We're just gonna give you guys a quick update. So at the January 26th uh, school board meeting, you guys approved going out for the transportation RFP. And then February 26th was the RFP deadline and we did receive one alternate response, which Norby and I have been reviewing. And he can give you an update on that. Yeah, um, well, the proposal that we did get in uh, was very different from then what we were expecting both in the uh, operational um, responsibilities and the financial expectations on it. So since then we've been in contact, uh, communications with legal counsel. We have an uh, internal meeting set this week and then another meeting set with a uh, contractor on Friday. And uh, yeah, hoping to, hoping to go from there and have something wrapped up by in April, I guess would be our our target to make sure that we have something to um, really put forward here and, and uh, have something to make a decision on. So I'm thinking positive about it. So, mm -hmm. but things are moving right along. What else, if anything, 
can we do from a board perspective? Um, just be there to um, help us with if we have any questions because we are probably going to look for some guidance on the financial piece. Yeah, in our meeting, we'll be going through the line by line stuff and, and kind of doing more of the, the, the digging into it. And, and then we'll have, we'll have a lot more even after this week to get better direction. So we'll probably have another update at the next board meeting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, for sure. Okay. Well, thanks for your hard work on that. Thank you. Not an easy one. Yeah, we'll keep moving forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, we're on to new business and our Blueprint 181 project update. And Damien, are you starting out? We had a little bit of a technical issue, so. Okay. I don't see him up there at all. I can't tell who I There you are. We lost. Sorry, we lost the audio. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Justin. Hi. So with Damien being gone, I'm, I'm co covering for him. So I will screen. Are you able to hear me all right? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Are you able to see the presentation? Can you see what I'm presenting? No, no. Not yet, Justin. Uh-oh. Try it again. It says I'm presenting. How about that? Well, let me try this again here. There we go. We have it now. Okay. Can you see the? Are you able to see the full presentation there? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Past the technical difficulties here. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brainerd's Public Schools Bond Improvement Update for March 22nd. We are going to go through project updates and Scott will be presenting the South Campus playground equipment. So with that, I will turn it over to turn it over to Scott for, for Brainerd High School. All right. Uh, well, congratulations, uh, Lane. I wish I knew we were having cupcakes, but I've been there in person. <laughs> but uh, we'll keep you one. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So in area two, uh, we are well into the finishes stage now. Uh, as you can see in the upper right hand corner of the picture there, uh, we are padded out in all our ceilings, fireplace, uh, rock is all complete, terrazzo is done, all of our accent lighting is complete, uh, our Marlite paneling is complete. Um, the only thing we're waiting on now, it, which we rectified this week, is the uh, solid surface countertops and the fireplace will be going in. So the area two lobby will be wrapped up. Uh, we'll be waiting to polish until right before opening. So we got a nice uh, nice and neat, super shiny floor. Uh, inside the auditorium, we'll be wrapping up theatrical equipment this week. We got gopher stage lighting showing up next week. Uh, and as well, next week we'll have theatrical seating being installed in there. Uh, we had a slight shortage on some vinyl wall coverings, but the rest of that came in today, so they'll be installing that as well. Area 10, uh, the crane will be gone tomorrow morning. All of our precast is in, the stadia, the rakers, the walls. We got all of our long span joists in over the pool superstructure, uh, and the decking is well underway. We're trying to get the decking completed so we can pull our anchors and then we can start digging our pool once the anchors are pulled. 
Uh, area eight, fax rooms, we are down to finishes. Uh, the lower left-hand corner picture there is our casework being installed. As of today, most of the countertops and surfaces have been installed. We're just working on some final uh, molding pieces. And we will have the uh, appliances showing up in the middle of April, and that'll pretty much wrap up the fax labs. Um, Area eight, we, we're finished for now until we get finished with the CTE expansion. We can connect our uh, corridor from the uh, far right side of the CTE wing to the pool uh, or athletics commons area. And area seven, our footings are complete. We're now preparing for structural steel. Uh, as soon as they get done wrapping up that roof, they'll move over and hang our structural steel. Any questions on that? I guess not. Hearing none. Just, all right, Justin, you want to hit the next slide? There's the auditorium pack. It's kind of hard to tell from the greeny picture, but all of our ceramic tiles up, all stone, vinyl wall covering, our Marlite panels, which uh, which brings the proscenium opening, is uh, all of our trim pieces are up, and all of the rest of the uh, paneling will be showing up this week for installation. On the right-hand side of the picture there, uh, that picture doesn't do, us, do it too much justice because if you went there today, you'd see all the battens, all the riggings hanging. Uh, that'll be wrapping up by the end of this week. And next slide, please. There's our uh, fireplace. And the picture on the right is the CT expansion. So we got ductwork in, all of our walls are framed up. Uh, we're getting our in-wall rough-ins completed and uh, we'll be looking to start putting sheetrock up. Uh, we've actually started putting sheetrock up today, but uh, we'll start one-siding that, that section of the building today. So everything's going really well on the south side. Any questions, further questions? Probably not. Let's keep this moving pretty quick. South Campus. Uh, project update. So the Mendoli building plan review started on 317. We did submit January 20th. So we were in queue for quite a while there. Uh, I don't foresee any issues with that as of right now. Uh, we are slated for a May 31st, uh, 2021 demolition to begin. Obviously that's that's uh, Labor Day. So I'll likely be in a second, but uh, we're going to get some crews in there prepping and uh, putting trailers down and starting to save materials and that good stuff. Uh, also in your board packet, you'll see a uh, proposal from flagship recreation. Uh, part of the project was to procure the playground equipment, the uh, gym equipment and the gym floor through Sourcewell uh, and attached to your board book is that Sourcewell pricing for our uh, South Campus playground equipment and the upper uh, picture there is exactly what that proposal includes. So it includes the, the hard surface, which is ADA compliant. And then well, all of the equipment you see there, swings, gliders, uh, overhead climbers, I believe they call them now, uh, the spider, spider thing, ADA gliders. Uh, any questions on that proposal? Great, we'll keep moving. Warrior Early Learning Center, we have completed or have issued the punch list and is currently being worked on. Life safety, mechanical, electrical systems are complete and functional. Um, it has been final clean and they have tested and balanced or working on testing, testing and balancing and working for its commission. You can see a few pictures there. It's really, really turned out, turned out nice. Any, any questions on Warrior Early Learning Center? No. Garfield Elementary, wrapping up phase two schedule, um, phase two material procurement, planning commission update for, for the gym expansion. So not a lot to talk about on Garfield. Any questions on, on Garfield? So did the planning commission, that happened, right? Yep. The variants were all mm -hmm. approved. We're good. The variants and the cup went through. Um, yeah. All they asked us to do was to put two extra trees on the north side. Okay. So nice. now on April 5th, we will go to the city council. I Do you remember what time it is, Reed? I think 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock. And then hopefully 
it's a it's a go at that point. Okay. So you don't need a board member there. You think it's pretty straightforward. Think yeah, I think they've done a really nice job so okay. of helping support this effort. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lowell Elementary. Right. Lowell Elementary. Demo in the lower level remodel area has, has continued. Um, stud framing, sort of framing at the lower level. And they're working on overhead mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, plumbing rough ends. Any questions on Lowell? So all those pictures are the Lowell, what the Lowell, lower level looks like now. Yeah. Wow. I believe so, yeah. Okay, great. And lastly, Riverside Elementary, demo and area A has commenced and they've put up temp walls at that area to support the demolition and um, underground plumbing in area A has commenced as well. LED lighting has been installed at the area A offices. So you can see a couple pictures and the overall, the overall floor plan identifying what's what. Any questions for us? I see none. So thank you. Just hang on yep, thank until, you. until we get through your uh, approval of the of the yep. um, playground equipment. We'll be good. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Justin. Okay, and now we're now going into the for action part of our our board meeting. And first up is approval of those, that playground equipment that we just learned about. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Jana. Second. Thank you, Charles. Discussion? This is within the budget that we had planned for that, correct? Yep. Okay. Okay. So hearing no questions. Roll call. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Janice Shogren? Yes. Charles Blacklands? Yes. Kevin Boyles? Yes. Tom Hagelin? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Carried unanimously. Thank you. And now we'll go on to the Digital Horizons Audiovisual Public Address System. Good evening. Um, just wanted to bring the a proposal in front of you here today. Um, the, in your packet is one proposal from Digital Horizons uh, for the audiovisual and, and PA system for the cafeteria and gymnasium. So um, you may recall on our Wave 1 schools, we went out and did a comprehensive uh, public bid on the PA systems for Baxter, Nisswa, Harrison um, elementary schools. Um, Moving forward for wave two, we decided to break these out. Um, when we look at the state bid law and what we're allowed to bid up to before we get into that public bid threshold, um, you know, typically we like to see the project over 175,000. That's kind of the criteria where we would go out and, and seek public bids. So um, the wave one schools, to give you an example, Baxter Elementary's total package was 125,000. Um, Harrison Elementary was 93,000 and Nisswa was 87,500. So you can see we're, we're much less than that. Um, and again, in your packet is a proposal here from Digital Horizons. We did receive a second proposal um, from VSI who actually was awarded all of our, our first wave projects. Um, VSI's proposal came in at $91,240. So Digital Horizons is still a little bitter at $87,477 and zero, zero cents. But I wanted to make you aware that another uh, proposal did come in. Um, they did get it to me late to get into the board packet. I have a copy here if anybody would like to review it. Um, but uh, we do have this on file here. They had a family emergency um, that they um, weren't able to get the bid in for me right away to get to the packet. So. Um, can I answer any questions about the PA systems for this one? We're going to have we're going to have uh, Garfield and Riverside coming to you at the next board meeting as well. We just got those as well. So is it the same system as we have in the other schools, even though a different company? Yep, same exact system. So we spec'd it out. Um, so uh, David Peterson, I believe, is our our consultant for the high school audiovisual systems as well as in our elementary schools. Um, ICS along with uh, our consultants put together a nice package for us to send out to these vendors. So everything was pre-assembled, pre pre-specced uh, out so that we got the same components in our Wave 2 schools that we did in our Wave 1 schools. Okay, any other questions? Okay, 
To je vam ovošan. I'll move to approve. Thank you, Director Hagelin. I'll second. Thank you, Director Boyle. Further questions? Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Jana Shogren? Yes. Charles Blacklands? Yes. Kevin Boyles? Yes. Tom Hagelin? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Carried unanimously. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Reed. Yep, thank you. Okay, and our final action item is the approval of the second and final reading of our fund balance policy number 714. Um, and if do does anyone have any further questions? We went through that quite a bit at the last meeting. No, I think we covered it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'd need a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Okay. First from Director Nystrom. A second from Director Blacklands. Any further discussion? Just a, a, a quick comment. This is I appreciate this uh, being updated like this. I think we really. Need it. It'll just be challenging for Marcy and Lane and the rest of the team. We just need to always make keep this in mind so that we see some incremental uh, increase in our fund each fiscal year, as challenging as, as it might be, so that we don't kick the can down the road and say, well, maybe next year we can try to get there. And then we, we need to make some incremental steps each year. So it'd yeah. be nice to have. Said, oh, thank you, Tom. I agree. Okay, roll call vote. Charles Blacklands? Yes. Kevin Boyles? Yes. Tom Hagelin? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Jana Shogren? Yes. Carried unanimously. Okay, wonderful. So that was the final reading of that policy. And we'll move on to informational equity task force report. Director Blacklands. Okay. I had the opportunity last week to meet with the equity task force again for the school district. And we've been meeting pretty consistently this, this semester. And uh, basically where we've been moving towards is a continued conversation around the, the, the courage and, uh, and the group being action oriented. We understand that there's gonna be some naysayers uh, along the way and we wanna be able to plan for that and discuss that. And most importantly, make sure that we have a members around the table that'll best prepare us to um, include the the, um, <clears throat> the input of the community, but also to meet the needs of the community as well. We also would like to um, to move forward with the best possible outcomes for the group and to remain focused on that. So we had a we had a robust conversation about that as well. And these are conversations that uh, we have a lot of talent and a lot of passion around that board or around that table, I should say. And uh, so um, it's really fun to be a part of that process in terms of what, what we feel as an as a equity task force, um, what, what's best in terms of an outcome, but also we appreciate the input of the board and uh, other members of that committee to provide us some, uh, some direction in that, and which is really significant. We also um, discussed the, the importance of the needs assessment that will be, that'll be defined later. And then also um, we talked about once the needs assessment is completed, uh, we did have a conversation about membership and, uh, and possibly growing the group. But at this point, uh, until that needs assessment is complete and uh, until we get to a firm ground of, of what our best possible outcomes will be, uh, we decided to focus right now on student membership. And uh, in, in doing so, we also want to organize at the high school, encourage students to organize at the high school level as it relates to, to equity. Um, um, and then uh, that kind of be, a, be a, an opportunity for students to develop their leadership and uh, be a part of our group eventually. So students are really important and we want to make sure that they have an opportunity around this very important table. Finally, it uh, was discussed by the group and I'm excited to share with all of you that the group would love to extend an invitation to, to the, um, some of you board members to be also seated around that table. Um, we feel it's really important to, uh, um, to have uh, members of the board present to, to be aware of what's going on, also provide uh, appropriate direction, but also appropriate input. So uh, consider yourself invited and uh, I think Lane and myself can, uh, and the group can uh, 
um, can uh, navigate and facilitate that process. But if, if you're interested, and this is something that you're, that you're feeling called to or something interested in being part of, just let us know. But uh, I'm really uh, excited because I know that there's a number of you that are, have already showed some interest in possibly being a part of this group. So I appreciate that. Yeah. This is a very Thank effective you. meeting. Thank you. I love the idea of having a student you know, group mm -hmm. over at the high school. That would be Thank wonderful, I think. So, Thank And you. then to have them be part of your task force. Right, too, so. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Any other questions for Director Blackcloud? Okay, thank you. Business services report. The financial report's in your packet. There's nothing new <clears throat> to note. It's pretty consistent with the prior months. Um, I did wanna give just a quick legislative update uh, based on the February forecast the governor did revise his budget to add an additional 86 million to education. And 68 million is to help mitigate the declining compensatory revenue due to the pandemic, which would really help us out. Mm -hmm. um, and then the house did advance funding for summer learning opportunities. However, the Senate hasn't taken up a similar package, so they don't think there'll be anything before the break, which starts March 26th. So just wanted to give a quick update on that. So Lane, that was all state. State stuff, right? Yep, state, that's all state. state. Okay. Can I yep. talk a little bit about the federal too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in federal, we get um, ICS put on a presentation that Lane and I were both a part of, um, talking about the the third level of funds. We still haven't heard anything from the state on that, but they did um, share some information that was interesting. I mean, it, it gives us more opportunities, more um, categorical. Some of the other information I saw was like specific areas have to be spent. Um, for example, on learning loss percentages of that funding. So more to come on those as well. And congrats to Lane. I didn't get a chance to say it. <laughs> yeah, stay for a cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions for Nancy? Okay. Thank you. And the superintendent's report. All right. Um, just a couple of things that I'll add to um, on top of the things that we've talked about tonight. Um, Norby and Marcy did talk about the fact that we are meeting internally um, with, as about the transportation RFP, and then we are meeting with the representatives on Friday at 1030. And so we're excited to have that meeting and to come to the table and to, to have those discussions. Um, just a little COVID update. Um, right now we have 101 students in quarantine. Our numbers are going up a little bit. So uh, we have five students that are positive. And meanwhile, we have three staff that are positive and eight staff that are in quarantine. So um, we want to watch it now a little bit around spring break and with this new variant and such, because we want to uh, be able to keep things under wraps. and. Thanks again to Heidi and Angie for taking over that while we're um, short a COVID coordinator and they've been working tirelessly at night and weekends um, to keep that uh, going. So thank you. Hey, Blaine, a quick yes. question on that. To our knowledge, have all staff members that want to be vaccinated been provided that opportunity? Do we know? I think as far so. As we know. Yeah, okay. I haven't heard of anybody that's been turned down that's in education. Um, the county's been awesome for helping, you know, but you can't, we can't know who's had it or ask them if they've had it um, just because of comfort HIPAA or. Yeah, levels. yeah, no, I understand that. What if for those that uh, have had it and came in contact, like those that are in quarantine, if they have the vaccination, do they still need to be quarantined? <clears throat> <laughs> um, so if they have had the vaccination, they're 14 days out from their last shot or the Johnson & Johnson one shot. They do not have to uh, quarantine for close contact um, while there's no symptoms present. So what we've done with the process is if they want to use that exemption, they need to show their vaccination card so we can prove that they're vaccinated. We've already had uh, probably about 10 people that have been able to get exempted from the quarantine, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as there's a symptom, any symptom, and I'll say even one, so you start getting a runny nose and you're, you're out. Um, even if you've been vaccinated yep. and, and the 14 yep. days have 
Yep, so even if there's any symptom, even though you've been fully vaccinated, you still have to quarantine and test just following the typical protocol. So that's kind of where we're sitting right now. There was a change this weekend, though, the C or Friday, I guess it was, the CDC mm -hmm. uh, moved the six foot distance three to three feet. And so that yep. is helpful as far as even in some of the classrooms that we were in tonight, you could tell that they're all six feet apart. And now uh, we can get kids a little bit closer together and do some of the school activities that are going on, which will be nice. Mm -hmm. And we did oh. just send out another push for vaccinations for anyone who was just kind of waiting to see and maybe undecided at the previous time. I mean, in our area, we're very lucky um, mm -hmm. that our county has certainly put educators in priority and even Walmart reached out today and said, hey, I have a bunch of vaccines, let your educators know how to sign up. So we, we sent that out as well, um, area pharmacies, medical clinics, um, as, long, as well as Crow Wing County, you can sign up for an appointment directly. So we've been pushing that out to staff. Um, I would be surprised if anyone felt that they, we haven't provided that opportunity or at least the resource. Um, but certainly there may be some that are choosing not to become vaccinated. Do you, has, do you feel that those individuals that maybe are on the fence, have they been provided the adequate amount of education or information on? We have been providing um, updates of when Angie Hamilton was still with us. She would uh, send periodic updates about, you know, where do you, yeah find information on the websites about the vaccines. I mean, obviously now there's three that people can kind of choose from. I do have, uh, I've received a couple of inquiries the last few weeks that people were holding out for the Johnson & Johnson because they just wanted to do the one and done. Um, so now they're kind of waiting to see if that's going to become more available in our area or not. Um, and some people just are choosing that that's not right for them. And that's obviously their choice. So um, we are trying to get as much information as possible out. All of our communications have links to everywhere <laughs> imaginable, um, but it's definitely a personal decision. We are, and we just pushed out, um, we are gonna do an anonymous survey <clears throat> with staff to try and get a feel for the percentage of vaccinated. If people, hopefully they'll feel comfortable enough to complete the survey so we can get a percentage, just because I think that'll be helpful for families who are also maybe wanting to know that information before they send their kids back. We sent out a survey recently uh, just to see how uh, families are feeling about sending their kids back next fall. And there are still many people that are on the fence about not, not sure that they can make that decision yet at this point, and they're waiting to see what happens with the CDC and what kind of guidelines are in place. But um, we get some really good data as far as helping us now with our budgeting for um, having a little bit more confidence in what the numbers might be next spring or fall. Thank you. So. Thank you. Well, it was maybe a good year not to have spring break. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank you, Angie, and thank you, Heidi. We still don't have a new COVID coordinator, correct? Don't have any applicants either. So. Okay. So thank you for all your extra work. I know that's got to be a little stressful on you, so... We Thank you. Them. Enjoy your cupcake. As well. <laughs> <laughs> we have some great nurses. Yeah. yeah. Grace the freshman and now Missy Lake from yeah. Forest. You've stepped up too. So. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. So definitely yeah. taking a break. Yeah. So we appreciate them all. Okay. Well, thank you for all your extra work because that's a tough one. So thank they you. They have. They're working tirelessly day and night. So all of these guys. So thank you. Yeah. Just. Um, Many of the things that we talked about have been uh, talked about that we were that I was going to visit with, but um, Corey and I met with Ruth this week uh, to talk a little bit about the naming of the Performing Arts Center, and Corey will be here at the April 12th meeting to kind of give another idea on on what our next steps could be. But we know that we aren't going to have a name by May 1st for the grand opening, and so we don't want to rush it. We want to get we want to make sure that we get it right. So. Um, she will have kind of a, a plan for us at that time. And then um, fun thing that happened today, um, Heidi uh, partook in a special Olympic polar plunge over at the high school. And there were 136 people jumping and they made $21,607 today. 
And tomorrow it's at Forest View, right? Yeah. So Emily Freed yep. led the charge for Brainerd High School and then a baby camp for Forest View, but it was uh, Philly Raplunge. Where did you plunge? Into it. So they brought uh, Special Olympics of Minnesota brought the tank and they put it over uh, the parking lot beside Dodge Pack. That is up the north side. Okay. So the kids could come right out the door. So lots of staff and students, a lot of our Special Olympians the plunge and um, their goal was ten thousand dollars okay. to see them when I left the building it was twenty one thousand six hundred and seven <laughs> so they were amazing. That is amazing. Great. Yeah, yeah. it's phenomenal. So thank you for doing that. Yes, that was a great excuse to get out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And the last thing that I have at the next board meeting, April 12th, we will have optional tours beforehand again. And so Garfield will be at 415 and Riverside at 5 o'clock. And I don't think you've seen the construction of those two facilities yet. So it'll be new to everybody. So we're excited about it. So that's and all we're on have. track for the PAC grand opening, May 1st. Yep. May 1st, yep. Okay. I could circle back. Can we circle back to the transportation RFP meeting yep. again? Yeah. Just want to make sure I understood that correctly, and then and you know sort of make an offer to say would it be beneficial to have somebody from the board involved in that, or is it too early for that, or where are we at? What do you think? You're always welcome. You're always welcome, and so if, if you know we've had board members that have been in conversation with us, like when we did the addendums and stuff this past year. And um, just now as we're getting the RFP, um, but we certainly can meet one time or if, but if, if a board member or two wants to show up, we're, we're fine with that too. Okay. So 10.30, we're meeting on Friday. But that's all I have. Kevin, I'll let you be our representative there. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Okay, is there anything else? To come before the board? Okay. If not, I need a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Thank you. Second? Second. I guess we need to do a roll call on this. Seems kind of silly, but. <laughs> Kevin Boyles? Yes. Tom Hagelin? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Jenna Shogren? Yes. Charles Blacklands? Yes. Carried unanimously. Thank you, and we are adjourned. Good.